Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to be making these heart-shaped hot pads. There is a free pattern down in the description box. Grab that and I'll walk you through how to make these. Today we're starting with these two templates cut out directly on the line and our top fabric. We're going to fold in half and place the template straight edge on the folded edge of our top fabric. Then we're just going to cut out right around that template. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to glue baste all of our layers. So let's bring in the back fabric. Today I'm using three layers of cotton batting, but you could substitute the cotton batting for insole bright if you wanted to do that. Just using a school glue stick and glue basting these layers with the heart on top. And I will bring that to the iron and just dry that glue and fuse these pieces in place. Once your glue is all nice and dry, you can bring this over to the sewing machine. You're going to want to quilt all of your layers at this point. And I like doing a crosshatch quilting for my little hot pads. That's nice and easy. You could be precise and measure out your crosshatching if you want to. I'm just doing some straight lines in both directions. Once it's all quilted, we're going to go clean up all of the edges and just cut right to the raw edge of our heart shape and trim away all of those extra layers of batting and the backing fabric. Wow, it is raining so hard right now. I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> the next thing we're going to do is bring in the pocket fabrics and we're going to fold those in half. I like to glue based mine and dry that glue with my iron. Then we're going to line up the pocket template straight edge on the folded edge of the fabric and we're going to cut these two pieces of fabric right to the raw edge of that template. We're going to bring this over to the sewing machine and I'm sewing a straight stitch about an eighth away from the folded edge of these two pieces. Now we can make our little hanger. The first thing you're going to do is just fold that right in half and then open it back up and fold both raw edges right to that center crease. Give that a press and then fold it one more time on that original crease that we made. Press that nice and flat and bring that to the sewing machine and sew a straight stitch on both sides. So now we have all the pieces to make our hot pad. I like to glue baste mine right in place. You could use pins or binding clips if you wanted to do that. The first way we're going to make this is with some bias binding. So you'll see I have put the little pockets on the back side and we're going to bring this over to the sewing machine and add our bias binding to the front of our hot pad. Wow, it is raining so hard right now. <laughs> Let's go to the sewing machine. Today I'm working with about 36 inches of binding that I made and cut at two and a half inches wide. This is bias binding, which is pretty important because we have the curved edges of the heart. And I'm attaching it to the front of my hot pad with a quarter inch seam allowance. Here lately I've been doing lots and lots of bias binding. I think I'm getting a little bit better at it. It's those curved edges, y'all. <laughs> I've got to practice these curved edges. So I am definitely going to miss the live that we usually have on Fridays. I'm going to miss that this week. I miss talking with y'all, but I hope that you give this pattern a try. It is certainly a lot of fun and make sure you stick around to the end as I show you uh, how I cook that corn in the microwave. For this uh, 
binding, I'm just tucking the end of the binding into the beginning of the binding to keep it nice and simple, y'all. <laughs> over here at the pressing board, I have flipped that binding over to the back and started pressing it down towards the back. And now we're just going to insert that hanger underneath of that binding and finish glue basting it all the way around. And I like to glue baste it. You could uh, use some binding clips We'll dry that glue and we need to bring this back to the sewing machine. We're going to stitch in the ditch right next to that binding on the front side. The bias binding certainly gives a really nice finished look to this little hot pad. It's adorable. But I'm also going to show you here in just a minute. How wow, did you hear that? I'm going to show you here in just a minute how to make this hot pad without a binding. Let me go turn off my computer and stuff, all this lightning. I'll be right back. So here's our first hot pad, all finished with the bias binding. Check it out. It's purple, my favorite color. I think it's adorable. It has the little hanger. You could hang that up on a hook. Next, we're going to move over and we're going to do a little bit of an easier version. This hot pad is going to be one without a binding. So we're gonna take that top fabric and cut it out just like we did with the first one using the larger template. This time we're not bringing in the backing fabric. We're just gonna glue base the three layers of batting and our heart on top. Go dry that glue with a good hot iron and then bring it over to the sewing machine. You'll see I've already done some cross hatching on this to save some time in today's video. Again, we're gonna go around and trim off the extra batting right to the edge of our heart shape. We're gonna make the pockets just like we did before and our hanger. We're gonna layer this with the pockets on top of our purple fabric. We're gonna pin these pieces in place with the hanger and then lay our backing fabric on top and pin all the way around. Now we're going to bring this over to the sewn machine and I want you to do a straight stitch all the way around using a quarter inch seam allowance and make sure to leave an opening and you will want to do a back stitch at the beginning and the end. I'm sorry about the rain y'all. I'm running out of time to get this video done and up on the YouTubes <laughs> before we leave. So there's our little opening. I'm gonna cut that little center V in the heart shape. And then do some cuts on this curved areas of the hearts. I'm gonna try to use the pinking shears, but we've got three layers of batting there. It's kind of thick. Then we're gonna flip this heart right side out. Make sure to leave that opening pretty good size to fit all of this stuff through there. We're going to be pulling out those two pockets and the little hanger. On this version, the quilting is going to actually be on the side with the pockets. And I'm just taking my fingers and pushing that thicker seam all the way out. And once it's pushed out, I give that a press and bring it over to the sewing machine one last time. We're gonna go right around that edge and just do a top stitch all the way around. That's gonna close off our opening and flatten out our hot pad just a little bit and give a nice finished look to it. So here's our hot pad without a binding. I think that's adorable. I like how the little hanger sticks off to the side on this one. Y'all, this is a pretty good size hot pad. Even Harlan's hands fit inside this hot pad. It's actually maybe a tad bit too big for my hands. <laughs> but there's two different versions. I hope you can make some of these for yourself or for Christmas presents. Christmas is just a couple months away. Now let me bring you down to the kitchen. Uh, 
I'm going to show you how I do corn on the cob. Y'all, I learned this on YouTube, just like everything else. And uh, so I have some fresh ears of corn. And the first thing I'm going to do is just trim off uh, all the leaves that are hanging loose. Just with some kitchen scissors. And I like to cut off that edge where the silk hangs off the end. Anything loose, we're just cutting off. And then all the other leaves, we're leaving right on there. I like to cook four ears at a time. I'm gonna bring these over to the microwave. For each ear of corn, we cook for three minutes. So I'm just setting 12 minutes because we have four ears of corn. Y'all, this is on the just regular strength. I don't know the power wattage of my microwave, so you might need to adjust the time for yours. Uh, but once it's done, you can use your hot pads, reach right in and grab that corn. Then we're gonna bring it over to a cutting board and we're gonna be cutting off the ends, not the ends that we trimmed the silky parts off, but the very blunt end of the ear of corn where it actually attaches to the stalk. Then you can grab the silky end and just squeeze that corn right out of the leaf sleeve. I don't know what the technical word for that is, but y'all, it just slips right on out. Sometimes uh, you might need to grab a fork and just hold on to the ear of corn as you're pulling it out, but these are just slipping right on out. And all of the silk stays right inside those leaves. It's so easy, so quick and it makes a uh, good crispy corn. It's like the perfect ear of fresh corn. And we've certainly been enjoying a lot of it this summer. All right, everybody, as we close today's video, I just wanted to share a picture of Poppy with his ear of corn. He loves fresh corn on the cob. <laughs> okay, everybody, I'll see y'all really soon and uh, have fun making these hop heads. Bye, everybody.